Magic Makers, Mommy Rilla here. Some more from Comic Conroe. We got to meet Melanie Cohn and she was so amazing. She was the voice of Lucy from the Peanuts, which is of course an absolute classic. And one of the things I love about these events is you can get their autographs. You can get a chance to take a picture with them and talk to them for a little while. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And the panels are so much fun with the Q and A's. So come on, let's go. <laughs> Have any funny, interesting stories? Well, I mean, maybe, I don't know how, this is how funny it is, but maybe interesting. So when, when we recorded back then, back in the 70s, we, did, we didn't have our sessions together. We went in separately, and we worked with the producers. So, I have, you know how we have big bits and pieces yeah. of memory, and as you get older, I'm not looking at any particular person, <laughs> as you get older, you have, <laughs> hey. I'm talking about myself, you have these pieces of memory, but they become less and less, you know. I'll speak for myself. I just found out that my son and his father have this condition where they can't see pictures in the brain. And it's called atasphagia or something. Yeah. You've heard of it? Mm -hmm. I, I had no idea then I'm thinking, oh God, I feel, my son is 30 and I feel so horrible for him. And then, and then I'm thinking, wait a minute, it's like a person who, who's born without vision. They don't know what vision is, right? So I shouldn't really feel bad for him because he's had this condition his whole life. So my, back to my point. I see pictures, very vivid pictures, but I see these flashes of memory in my head. That's how I remember things. So I have these flashes of memory, and I, I recall going to church one day when I was about 12, which was after I had, or it was probably, I, I might have still been doing the, the Lucy thing, but it was towards the end. And I, and I ran into Charlie, Charlie Brown, and, and so now, you know, older, older Melanie is saying, how did I know who he was, you know? But I have a memory of running into him and running after him. <laughs> he was a year older than me. And, you know, so we have this kind of, you know, I remember he was kind of like, not very nice to me, and I don't know, like at that age, if that's flirtation or what. <laughs> um, I just have this memory. And so I... You know, this is another point about how things have changed and evolved. You know, now we have the internet, we have social media. So when I started doing this last year, uh, after a few months, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I should look him up. Maybe he would want to do a show with me. So I looked him up and I found him and I reached out to him and we ended up talking on the phone. And then we end up in April of this year have to do our first show together in New Jersey after 45 years and you know he's 59 and I'm 58 and it's like I asked him the you know one of the first questions I asked him was how did I know who you were he said well we we would go into when we had a, a to do a song we did the show be coming around the mountain when she comes we did that for a race for your life Charlie Brown he said we were in the studio together and they also did the sessions like one after another. So at some point, you know, I'm going in, you're coming out, or vice versa, right? So we just had seen each other in passing. We didn't know each other. We just knew, oh, you're Charlie Brown. Oh, you're Lucy. So now we are, you know, I don't know, we're friends, acquaintances, and we do shows together. And he lives in New Hampshire. He's going to be out here, actually, in, in November in Mont Bellevue which is east of Houston. And so it's like, it's pretty cool. This is not a funny story. This is an interesting story. <laughs> but, you know, I, I got a hold of him after all this time, and I never in a million years thought, I'd imagine doing what I'm doing. And then when I told him about it, he said, wait, 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 wait slow down, explain this to me. I mean, go to these shows, you go to these comic cons and what? <laughs> I said, well, we got merchandise and we have 8x10s and we... Um, I think that was a... 
you know, we, we talked to fans, and you know, it was like he just he had a hard time grasping the concept. Well, I had, I did too, but I was a few months into it, so I, I understood better than he did. So then I started guiding him on what to buy, and so every time I see something like on eBay or whatever, I you know, I send him the link, and he, he buys it. He listens to me. I book his shows for him. I negotiate for him. I'm not his agent. He doesn't pay me. But, you know, I feel like Charlie Brown and Lucy together is better than one or the, you know, one alone or the yeah. other, right? Yeah. So, I think it's kind of cool. I actually just thought of an actual question now. Um, Lucy quotes are some of my favorite, like, especially, you know, when she's giving psychiatric help. Um, probably my all-time favorite is when she says to Charlie Brown, there's no, there's never been more harm in the world done than by men who thought they were doing the right thing. That's probably my favorite also. It, you know, and it's so poignant and philosophical, and it's like, you know, some of the best ones, you know, were by Lucy in her little, you know, psychiatry booth. Do you have a favorite Lucy quote? Actually, I do, and it's not as deep as that. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. But the, I've got to be kissed by a dog, dog germs, get hot water, just get the dyspepsia, get the iodine, because I'm, I'm germ phobic. Like, really bad. Really bad. So I can so relate to that. And that is definitely my favorite part. And, you know, like I said, not deep, not philosophical. But... I just want to call the same. Yes. yes. But you make me think of, you know, Charles Schultz as a person and how he was so strong in his, his will. Um, First with the parables, you know, with the Charlie Brown Christmas, and he was advised, don't bring religion into this. And he said, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, you know, I'm, this is what I, this is what I believe, this is what I want to do. And it worked, right? <laughs> then it was Franklin, you know, he was told, don't bring Franklin into Peanuts, don't do it. He said, you know what, I'm going to bring Franklin into Peanuts. I'm going to introduce a black character, and you can fire me if you don't like it. I, this is what I'm going to do. And he did it, and he wasn't fired, and it worked. So he was strong-willed. He was neurotic. He had, you know, he had insecurities. He was, um, you know, he, he, knew, he, he knew what he wanted. He knew what he wanted to do. He was a visionary, and he also was brilliant. And you know, he, he fashioned his these characters after people he knew, and so he had something you know to have the kind of the outline of, every, of all the characters. So um, yeah, he, he really the, the cartoon was directed at, at, at adults clearly, and the kids got the fun of seeing the little characters. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, like, this, you know, if you've watched any of the more modern Peanuts stuff that's come out in the past couple of years, any Because uh, yeah. it seems, you know, like like you said, it's more aimed towards adults that the kids can enjoy. Now the stuff coming out is very watered down and just, it's made for kids. And it loses a lot of, you know, Schultz's, you know, points and philosophical, you know, quotes and stuff. I think that the people that are really into peanuts appreciate the, the vintage peanuts, not just for that, but for the, the way that they were created and, you know, the, the time that was put in before you came in, I was saying, you know, it took, it took six months to make a half hour special, which is really only 22 minutes of programming. It was, it was so, it was done so with such care and, and with the technology that they had back then, which was, not what they have now, what we have now. Um, so it's hard for me. I, honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest. You know, my husband and I bought the DVD of the Peanuts movie from 2015. We watched it. We didn't finish it. We still haven't finished it. <laughs> and I, I have a hard time with, um, even though my, my one of my kids worked at the studio that made these, you know, that does the Peanut, the current Peanut show, um, it's just hard for me to watch because it's just not done the way it was back then. You know, is it more the animation or the writing style? It's both, but for me, it's more the animation. And 
I think that um, for me, it, you know, this is just me. This isn't everybody my age. I just miss the simplicity of the 70s and the, you know, and back. I mean, I, I'm a 60s and 70s child, you know. I, I miss that simple life, you know, and the simple cartoon. And, you know, I watched them in black and white. I mean, I had nothing against, I had nothing against color TV, but you know, this is what, this is how I started, what I started on. So, yeah, it's hard for me to see the changes, but everything progresses with technology, right? Thank you. Yeah. You got all quiet now. I think when uh, you look back, there's uh, the quotes that they had, and uh, I know the, the very popular meme is, uh, you know, during the dance, where they're, they're dancing, it's very popular still, you know, where the, and they'll, they'll set it to modern music, and it, oh, yeah. it fits, you know, mm -hmm. and they'll say, oh, man, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to bust it in that song. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the, do the the, the, I can't do that because I have a <laughs> stiff neck, but yeah. Yeah, it's true. You can do the, you know, any kind of music to that. And, and then the the, uh, the the dialogue is it still fits. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's nothing more frustrating than than pulling that football out. Yeah. Now that I'm older I understand that. <laughs> and uh and people ask, I mean, I know you're not asking this, but people do ask, like, well, what, you know, is he ever, you know, would he ever get a chance to get No. <laughs> no, because he I mean, wouldn't understand. be Charlie Brown anymore, right? Yeah. He would be a completely different character. With it's a just like person. if the coyote catches the robot, yeah. then I don't want to be coyote. Right. Yeah, exactly. I think the clips his favorite came was the one where he was invisible, the Halloween one where he was invisible. And like Lucy couldn't see him, but then the second time he thought he was gonna kick it, she could see him. So like she just pretended she thought he was invisible and pulled away. <laughs> so I think that's about as close as he got. I have one on my tail. Yeah. But I mean, I think each character is meant and, and you know, I mean we joke around about it. Some well some people ask in all seriousness, you know, what why did she ever well, you know, Lucy was Lucy with her personality, and Charlie Brown was, and his personality, and, you know, those were things that that were set, you know, they, that didn't change. And I was saying before you came in, you know, um, the the kid, they, this was not meant to have adult voices or you know adults in it. So the trombone was the mom, mom, mom. <laughs> and the you know, the, an adult did the. Bill Melendez, the producer, did the Snoopy and Woodstock's voices, you know, just, but they didn't talk, just that kind of weird, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was meant to be just the kids and their, their experiences. Oh, don't be all shy. Do you have any favorite, like, favorite moments from during the time that you were doing the show? that stand out to you, like funny things or, or like specific parts, of, were there ever parts of it that like impressed you when you were younger and you were doing it, part of it? I think, you know what's funny? No, I just told the thing about the interesting. I, I, you said funny or interesting, so I said, told you the interesting story. I did some bread commercials and, and I I came across a script. I still have the script all these years later. This is a lot of years later. I mean, this was 1974, 1975. I did two two types of bread commercials, and they had the little like TV monitor things, and and the actual script. I don't have them with me. I bring different stuff to different shows, and I just happen to not bring them with me. But I remember them saying. Now Lucy's walking into the loaf of bread, and it's gonna get echoey. And so, like, I just remember, I have a memory of um, doing the, the lines, but then when I saw the commercial, you know, it was like echo. <laughs> so I, th I just thought that was kinda cool. 
the simple sound effects, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Are you in here resting, or do you have a question? Uh, me? Yeah. No <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I just didn't want to ignore you. <laughs> it's okay if you don't have questions. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No, it's all good. Did you feel like when you were younger you identified with Lucy as a character? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you had to. No, I think that's the right answer. Regardless, right? <laughs> no, and I'll tell you why. I was... I was a very um, outgoing, energetic, well, I don't want to say energetic, no, I'll take that one back. I was outgoing, I was, you know, a theater kid. So I was, like, really, I, I tended to get a lot of attention from adults when I was a kid. Because I was very, like, I was creative and I was, like, just excite, excitable, I guess. Not like running around all over the place. I wasn't hyper, but I was just like very excitable. And I don't really, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a crabby kid. So, no. Sorry. <laughs> well, you played it very well. Thank you. I mean, my sister is like, my sister has the dark hair and really, really dark eyes. And so it's like, she was more, you know, if you think of like an image. You know, she she was more like Lucy. So. Yeah, I guess they teased me and said I was the girl with the naturally curly red hair. <laughs> Wasn't that a character? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that Charlie Brown had a crush on. I always kind of felt like with Lucy and Linus that there was a, a very sibling dynamic there because it was a love hate thing. Like he falls asleep in the pumpkin patch and one she carries him to bed regardless of the fact that she'd just been berating him for how dumb he was for what he was doing. And that just seemed to be like the, the case with them no matter what, you know, it was like, oh, he's my brother though, you know, kind of situation. Yeah. And that's like what we see in real life, you know, mm -hmm. the sibling rivalry. Do you remember that, that they had another sibling? Little sister. No, little brother. Uh, rewind. Yeah. <laughs> rewind. Yes. Um, she wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think that she had kind of a loving thing going on with Linus. You're saying with Franklin, what year was that where they uh, gave him all the man? Um, I, I want to say, and I don't want to, I, I don't want to. Um, was it just like early 70s? I believe it was the 70s, but I'm going to look it up just in case. I don't want to be wrong. 68. I thought it was 68, but I didn't want to say. Because I, I always put the, on my Facebook, I always put like, um, their, well, I call it their birthday. The day they were introduced, I say happy birthday to whatever <laughs> character. So Lucy, Lucy debuted in 52. Um, which, you know, was, this was quite a bit later, you know, it was 1968. This was, well, you know, the 60s. That wasn't a good time for, um, you know, to, for some, some people's opinion to introduce a character like that. We felt it was more, so. It's still so crazy to think that it was that short a time ago. Like, you always like to think of that as being so far in the past. Years, yeah. Those kind of things. And it is, yeah, I know. And on one hand, it's definitely hard to believe. And on the other hand, you know, it seems like the progression of things has just gotten faster and faster and faster. You know, so. And then on the other hand, you know, I think back to that, to the 60s, and it's like, wow, that was a long time ago. That's what I was born. <laughs> Did you uh, ever get to meet Schultz? No, I was I was asked before you came in. So I worked with Bill Melendez and Lee Mendelson, and I didn't get to meet Charles Schultz. I don't know, I don't really know why, because uh, no, he didn't come into the studio. But 
um, he had the skating rink very close to where I lived. And um, my sister did get to meet him at some point, but I think it was at a birthday party, like a skating party. It wasn't at the studio, it was at his skating rink. I don't know if you knew, but he was like big into Hogwarts and built the skating rink in Santa Rosa, California. I think you said you were the fourth Lucy? My sister was the fourth, I was a fifth. Okay. Did you get to meet any of the other Lucy's other than uh, obviously your sister? <laughs> That's a good question. So I have met, I have to think about this for a second. I, so this was as recently as probably about seven or so years ago. I was living in Bellingham, Washington working for a radio station, and one of my clients was a local theater. And so they decided they were gonna promote, um, you know, run ads on the radio for your good man, Charlie Brown. So I just happened to tell my client, because I didn't really like, I didn't go through my life like bragging about this, because it's, it's just something that I did when I was a kid. I didn't think it was a big deal. So I just happened to mention it, you know, because it was like relevant. Mm -hmm. And so she said, oh, did you know that the first Lucy lives here in this town. She's a librarian <laughs> at the high school. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> this is Tracy Stratford. And she's like, I would love if you guys could come before the performance and just kind of like, you know, say a few words to the crowd outside before they go in. And then do this, like, flip the switch to turn. There's like a tower in the theater. And flip the switch to turn the lights on. Well, they're obviously, you know, we're going to switch inside. So um, we did, and I got to meet her, and I was like totally fan gold out. Like, I was like, seriously? You know, you're, I'm meeting Tracy Stratford. She was a child actor. She did, you know, she did on street stuff. So yeah, that was exciting. But that was like, you know, I met her when I was like 50 years old. And as far as any other Lucy's, just because my sister. Because once you retire, that's it. You know, you don't go on back in the studio and go, oh, I want to be the person that took my place. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did y'all study the voice, or was it just something that they kind of auditioned you for and were like, yeah, you've got the right voice for it? Well, they, they audition, and I don't really understand the process because they had a, another child actor for now. Pamela Ferd, she was once, she was like the third voice or something. And her voice was so unique and so different from anybody else. So, um, you know, I really don't know. Like with me, it was part of it had to do with voice quality, similar. But <coughs> with the other ones, it just really was kind of random. It seemed kind of random. I never knew the difference. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bart Simpson. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, people, <coughs> excuse me, people come up to my table and just think that I'm like that. Like, I, I've been voicing her the whole time. I'm sorry. Would you like the water? That'd be awesome. I got a major tickle going on. Um, like, you know, like Bart Simpson. You know, it's been the same person for over 30 years. Peanuts uses kids. It's really unique. Do you think a lot of voices nowadays, you know, it's not just voice actors that can make whistles on their kids, it's just the technology has gotten so good that you know, they can just force it to sound more kid-like? I think that um, having the flexibility, you know, having, um, being able to make the voice sound different ways helps a lot. Um, you know, I do the, 
I do these shows with different voice actors all the time, and it's like a lot of them will break out into their voice, you know? And you, you can just tell they've got that flexibility to, to make different sounds. But yes, definitely that comes into play, the technology, and, you know, being able to, um, you know, because when I voiced radio ads, it was the same thing. It was like they just, you know, do a little switch or knob, and it was like, wow, I, I sound different, you know? They didn't really do that back then. Um, well, I really like your booth. Uh, have you done like, you know, not like you the convention circuits and stuff like that. I've, I've known a lot of voice actors or like child actors that come back into it that have gone like the extra mile to, you know, once they get out of the character, they forget about it and life goes on. But then when they start getting back in the concert, they actually start like researching the kind of catch up on like, you know, what's going on with the character or that series or whatever and, you know, kind of stay on top of it. Have like, you know, your booth is really cool. Have uh, you done like research and be like, you know, oh, I need to do this or this or like, you know, have little like Lucy quotes printed out that way I can sign them and, you know, have you done like research on how you think it's best for you to like do the cons and work it and stuff? That's a really awesome question. Um, so in some ways, yeah, in some ways, no. Like I'm still kind of like going, whoa, you know, because it has only been about a year. Um, yes, I, first of all, I learn new things every time I do a show, on a show. I learn things from the fans, I learn things from the other guests, I learn things from the promoters. I learn constantly. And I, yes, I've researched quotes. I put a quote on everything that I sign, unless somebody requests to not have a quote. I put a quote on all my 8x10s and even on the pops. Um, sometimes I won't do it on the, like, a merchandise, depending on what it is, like if it's something kind of small. But that's the other thing. I've learned that, you know, some things are better to sign than others. You know, so I kind of keep, try to keep mostly things that are easier to sign. Um, so yes, I've looked up quotes, I've had people come to me with quotes, um, I'm like, oh, that's great, you know, and I'll put it in my phone, I put everything in my phone, you know, like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. Um, so it's, you know, and I've bought, like, I have a Peanuts backpack now, and a Peanuts, uh, you know, shoulder bag. I have, like, I did collect Peanuts stuff before. Now it's like everything. And I'm not like all consumed in peanuts, but yeah, my awareness is definitely up there for what's what's going on. I definitely think that comes with the territory of Comic Con. It's just how it's constantly evolving and growing, and you can't help but get swept along with it. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's, and I'm discovering new things. Like I go on um, Amazon, you know, and I found this chocolate. That's like there's a chocolate that's specifically has a partnership with Venus to have the characters on their chocolate bars. I had no idea. It's called Astor, you know? And and I also am constantly, and this kind of goes along with goes along with it, I am I'm constantly prospecting. So I'm constantly on the internet looking to see oh, I just do searches, peanuts, peanuts cartoons. Lucy events and I come up with all kinds of stuff. I just signed at the Astros game the other night. Really? Oh, awesome. Yeah. I mean I, I it was like, oh, they're having peanuts night. They have a bobblehead. Hmm. So I sent them an email and they sent me one back. Hey, we'd like to talk to you. And then next thing I know I'm sitting there signing for four hours. Oh, wow. I didn't know that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't either until I looked it up. <laughs> but I didn't look up Astros. I looked up Peanuts. Well, no, actually, I, I looked up Peanuts events, and then I saw, like, another baseball team. And then I'm like, oh, I wonder if the Astros have Peanuts night. So I put in Peanuts night, baseball, Peanuts day, baseball. And there, you know, they did have a day for, you know, people with peanut allergies. <laughs> it had, you know, because that comes up to you look at peanuts, you get all the, you have to go through all the, the salt peanuts and all that. 
Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and then like I got a hold of a farm in Temple, Texas. I'm gonna go there next or October to sign. You know, when they have their hay rides and all. It's like I think more along the lines of okay, it's the holidays are coming up. Last year I went to. I saw they had the Peanuts characters, and this was when I was first starting out. They had the Peanuts characters on the side of Raising Cane's Chicken, which I know you guys know because <laughs> we're in Texas. Maybe I'll ask them if they'd be interested in having me sign because it's Peanuts. Yeah. And they did. So, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly doing research and trying to figure out what's going on. I had another idea that turned out to be great. I thought, well, it just came up when I did my search. It's a, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. At, in Plano, the last three performances that they were doing, this was two weeks ago, um, I thought, well, shoot, maybe they'll have me come and sign in the lobby. And they're like, oh, what a great idea. So I went in for a half hour before each performance, the last three performances, and people came up to me like more than some, some shows. Some yeah. of these shows. Yeah. <laughs> Not the show, but you know, some of these because shows. those people are going specifically for that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. They are the Peanuts fans, mm -hmm. so I'm learning that too. Where am I going to get the most people that actually want to see me? Here, this is a very diverse Comic Con. I, I love it because it's not just anime. It's like you know, no offense, anybody, but it's you know, it's. It's everything. So I'm getting people that are coming up and saying, hey, you know, this is, you know, different. I like to, like to talk. So, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> um, I've, I've seen actors, that, like the, the guy that was in Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter Show, I don't know if you know that movie, but like the brother or whatever he's at conventions will actually sign like plates because he has a famous scene where they do the dishes by throwing the plates in the air and shooting with a shotgun. So now everybody just wants them to sign plates. Right, and that's that would be like me having footballs on my yeah. head, yeah. which I do. And I don't, it, I, it's kind of weird that people don't ask me a lot to, to do Sorry, a football. football. <laughs> it's the same kind of idea, you know, the same idea. Because like, they think they'll take it away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the, the promoter of this show who does banners and t-shirts, um, he made a, the booth, you know, the, the banner for me. Um, yeah. One thing I'd suggest, and this is something that you could probably do really cheap, but just like, you know, maybe some cardboard paper, print them out with like a circuit or something, but like a little like, you know, help box with five cents on it. Like you could just like print and fold and then you know, sign or something. That's a great idea. That I like that idea. I did have a booth at a, one of my signings, and it was they did a huge booth, and they built it around the table, and they put out a stool, and they put out the sign, That's and so they cool. put out a jar, and it said five cents. And at the end of the day, there was like fifty bucks in there. Yeah. And I'm like, I told my husband like halfway through the day, I'm like, take that away. <laughs> <laughs> People were putting fives and tens in there, but I do like that idea. You know, that's a, that's a really cute idea. I like that. I do have an artist that I that I partnered with, and he's out of um, some the Dallas area, and he I've got five of his pieces on my table now, and he does you know just kind of comes up with these themes that he thinks would be popular and so far. Like so I kind of that's another way of thinking outside the box. I mean, I, I really like your idea, and I try to think how can I do something that's a little different. That you know, I mean, I know there are people that that um, partner with artists, but I just thought you know this is this would be a great idea to showcase his talent at the same time. So it's not just me and my you know internet friends. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is this what you do full time then? Is going to different events and conventions? I wasn't necessarily intending it for it to, for it to be full time, but yeah, it's like I'm full time because I'm obsessed with um, prospecting. That's what I did when I was at the radio station. I'm constantly reaching out every single day, and what's happening is, you know, the more you reach out, the more response you get, and you 
you know, kind of like what I was telling you earlier, you know, you get a no, you just move on. You don't dwell on that. So I'm just constantly, constantly, and, and what's happening is my calendar is filling up. Have you ever had it where you were turned down when you offered to come out to an event? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, uh, some of it has to do with budget, and some of it has to do with um, just doesn't, not the right fit. Mm -hmm. They are more like, uh, you know, anime oriented. Okay. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, and I just move on. Yeah. So, I really thank you guys for coming in here and asking these questions. It's really great, greatly appreciated. And, um, you know, I hope it was answered your questions. Yeah. A huge thank you to Melanie Cohn and to Comic Conroe for having me out. This was wonderful, and of course, getting to hear some of the stories from the peanuts and behind the scenes stuff was great. If you haven't had a chance to yet, please take a second, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, comment down below, share with a friend, and remember, let it go and keep moving forward. Have a magical day. Bye.